Picture this, it's 1876. Over a decade after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and two criminals hatch an outlandish plan to steal his body and hold it for ransom. Sounds like something straight out of a Hollywood movie, right? Well, this actually happened, and the plot was so well crafted that it almost succeeded. Hello again and welcome to another exciting episode of The Mystery Reporter. Today, we're diving into the bizarre and sinister story of the secret plot to hold none other than the 16th President of the United States' dead body for ransom. So, buckle up, because this is one wild ride you don't want to miss. But before we dive into this extraordinary tale, let's take a quick moment to ask you to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss out on our intriguing and entertaining history historical content. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. We need to explore the historical backdrop of the United States in the years following the Civil War. The nation was still healing from the wounds of the devastating conflict, and there remained a bitter divide between the North and South. Abraham Lincoln, who was instrumental in ending the war and abolishing slavery, was both revered and despised by different factions. Lincoln's assassination in 1865 was orchestrated by John Wilkes Booth, a Confederate sympathizer, as part of a larger conspiracy to destabilize the Union government and exact revenge on behalf of the Confederacy. Given this context, it's not surprising that Lincoln's body held tremendous symbolic power, even in death. It represented not just the man himself, but the Union cause and the ideals he stood for. In the 1800s, counterfeiting became extremely common in America. This problem grew to an extent where amidst the chaos of multiple different currencies being issued by banks and the Civil War, it was thought that counterfeiting would significantly disrupt the entire American economy. Abraham Lincoln, during his presidency, established a single national currency and also ordered the Secret Service to capture counterfeiters. During this era of rampant counterfeiting, the measures enacted by Lincoln to combat it eventually caught up with Benjamin Boyd, America's most notorious counterfeiter at the time and was sentenced to prison in 1876, over a decade after Lincoln's death. As a result, his employer's organization was left in disarray, with their chief counterfeiter behind bars. This acted as the trigger that began this entire ordeal. This potent symbolism coupled with these consequences made Lincoln's body an attractive target for individuals with nefarious intentions. The president was laid to rest in Springfield, Illinois, and for 11 years, everything was peaceful until one fateful night in 1876. Now that we've set the stage, let's take a closer look into the details of this extraordinary plot. James Big Jim Kennelly, a notorious criminal and leader of a well-known counterfeiting ring, was the mastermind behind the scheme. His trusted accomplice was Terence Mullen, another member of the same criminal enterprise. Kennelly and Mullen were driven by a combination of financial gain and a desire to free their skilled counterfeiter friend, Benjamin Boyd, who was serving a 10-year prison sentence. In their eyes, Lincoln's body represented the perfect bargaining chip to secure both a $200,000 ransom and Boyd's release. As we've mentioned before, earlier that year Chicago law enforcement locked up currency plates counterfeiter Benjamin Boyd, who worked for the small-time crime boss. According to Thomas J. Crowell, author of Stealing Lincoln's Body, writing for U.S. News and World Report. Disappointed with losing one of his best counterfeiters, Kennelly persuaded two associates, Hughes and Mullen, to carry out the crime. The two criminals spent considerable time strategizing and plotting their move. They knew that they would have to be extremely careful and precise in their actions, as the theft of a former president's body would undoubtedly attract widespread attention and a swift response from law enforcement. Their plan involved infiltrating Lincoln's tomb in Springfield, Illinois, under the cover of darkness. Once inside, they would pry open the sarcophagus, remove the president's body, and transport it to a hidden location. From there, they would issue their ransom demands to the government, promising to return the body unharmed once their demands were met. With their audacious plan in place, Kennelly and Mullen realized they couldn't pull off such a high-stakes heist on their own, partly because the two had never committed grave robbery before. 
They needed a crew of like-minded individuals who could help them execute their scheme. So, they began the process of recruiting a small team of petty criminals, including Jack Hughes and a mysterious man known only as Lewis. Together, they meticulously planned the logistics of the heist, from breaking into the tomb and extracting the body to selecting a suitable hideout where they could stash the president's remains. They knew that every detail had to be perfect if they were to stand any chance of successfully ransoming Lincoln's body and evading the inevitable manhunt that would follow. While the criminals were planning their heist, they inadvertently shared their plot with a man named Louis Sweagles. Unbeknownst to them, Sweagles was a paid informant for the Secret Service. Seizing the opportunity to infiltrate the criminal operation, Sweagles played the part of an eager accomplice. He gained the trust of Kennelly, Mullen, and the rest of the crew while secretly feeding information about their plans to the authorities. And as the two criminals and their team devised a plan, Sweagles would inform his boss Patrick D. Tyrell, chief of the Chicago District Office of the Secret Service, of every little detail of the heist. As the date of the heist drew near, Sweagles worked closely with the Secret Service and local law enforcement to prepare for the imminent showdown. Tyrell and his men came up with their own plan to stop the heist from happening. They were determined to catch the conspirators in the act and protect the sanctity of Lincoln's tomb. First, Tyrell informed Abraham Lincoln's only living son, Robert Todd Lincoln, a Chicago attorney, of the plot. He requested Robert to allow him to let the plot continue so that he could capture the kidnappers in the act and enhance their chances of punishment. Robert agreed. Then, as the counterfeiters took a train to Springfield on the 6th of November, they were tailed by Tyrell and other detectives. Even when they were in Springfield and posed as tourists, observing the tomb in order to figure out how to break into it, they were closely watched. On the fateful night of November 7, 1876, the conspirators set their plan in motion. As they broke into the tomb and began the process of prying open the sarcophagus, the Secret Service agents and local law enforcement officers, who had been lying in wait, sprang into action. As soon as the conspirators tried to remove Lincoln's body, a detective accidentally fired a shot, which sent the criminals running and confused the officers who thought they were being shot at. In the ensuing chaos, the would-be grave robbers were captured, effectively foiling the plot to steal Lincoln's body. However, not all of the conspirators were apprehended that night. Both Kennelly and Mullen managed to evade capture, going on the run for several months. Eleven days after the attempted theft, the Chicago Daily News published an update. Jack Hughes and Terence Mullen, two notorious characters, were arrested last night for attempted robbery on the night of the 7th of the tomb of Abraham Lincoln, the paper reported. Mellon is a Chicago thief and counterfeiter, the paper continued. It is established beyond doubt that the attempt to remove Lincoln's body was made for the purpose of securing the ransom of Boyd, the incarcerated counterfeiter. In February 1877, Kennelly and Mullen were arrested, tried, and sentenced to prison for their role in the bizarre plot. With their capture, the final chapter in this astonishing tale came to a close. The failed plot to steal Lincoln's body had far-reaching consequences. It highlighted the vulnerability of the president's tomb and raised concerns about the security of such an important historical figure. To address these concerns, the tomb was reinforced, and the president's coffin was moved to a more secure location within the monument. After the whole ordeal, the custodian of the tomb, John Carroll Power, worried about future attempts on Lincoln's body. If amateur robbers were this close to pulling off the heist, imagine what would happen if professional body snatchers targeted the tomb. Power's only option was to hide the body somewhere no one could find it. So, he and five friends secretly reburied it in a shallow and marked grave in the tomb's basement. Over the years, Lincoln's body was moved several times to increasingly secure location within the tomb. In 1901, the president's body was moved one last time to a reinforced concrete chamber 10 feet beneath the floor of the tomb's burial chamber. There, it remains today, safe from any future attempts at desecration. The attempted theft of Lincoln's body was shocking to the American public. The audacity of the criminals involved and the potential desecration of a beloved president's remains led to widespread outrage and fascination. 
The incident also served as a reminder of the deep-seated divisions that still existed within the country in the years following the Civil War. This peculiar event in American history has inspired several books, documentaries, and articles, each exploring different aspects of the story. The incident has become a fascinating historical footnote, providing a unique glimpse into the turbulent era that followed the Civil War and the enduring impact of Abraham Lincoln's life and death. So, there you have it the incredible story of the secret plot to hold Abraham Lincoln's dead body for ransom. We hope you enjoyed this thrilling journey into one of the lesser-known episodes of American history. If you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss out on our fascinating historical content. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay curious.